Hey everyone, welcome back to another video regarding recovering from surgery from the patient's perspective. Today I want to talk uh, briefly about a topic regarding receiving help. And actually, it's not specific. Here we go. You may notice, well, if this is your first video, you may not be noticing, but um, if you check out other videos in this playlist, or even this one, you may notice that a lot of times you see me around plants. This is because I absolutely love plants. It's a hobby of mine. So here's where we're going with receiving for help. Shortly after elbow surgery, in fact, before elbow surgery, when I actually had my fractured elbow from falling off my bike, but shortly after breaking my arm, the time around surgery and then the immediate weeks after surgery. Of course, friends, family, coworkers, neighbors, whomever I knew, colleagues in my holistic nursing organization were reaching out to me asking how they could help and what support they could provide me and my husband while we were dealing with this trauma at home. One thing that happened was my colleagues at work many of them, and I mean many, people that I didn't even know well, started calling or texting or emailing me, asking me what kind of foods I liked and what kind of food they could bring up to the house and what kind of meals they could all prepare and have delivered. In fact, one colleague reached out to me and said, Elizabeth, you know, someone at work is really organizing a food train to come up to your house several nights a week. This was amazing. It was a beautiful act of love. It was a kind, thoughtful gesture, and it really spoke to my heart. I declined. What? I declined. In fact, I was like, are these people crazy? They know that I like to cook and bake. I mean, I bring big goods into a weekly meeting if I don't have my cooking, if I don't have my baking, what do I have, you know? And yes, I could not chop and dice. I could not open jars or handle um, heavy boiling pots. I needed my husband's help for a lot of meal prep. M mostly all meal prep, especially when my arm is acutely painful. But I'd sat there in the kitchen with him and I instructed him, and it was actually a process where he shared with me that he liked learning how to do these things, and he enjoyed seeing how I prepared the meals. And now, several months later, we do this kind of thing together. So, I declined the food train for my colleagues at work. How rude was I? No, no, I did it politely, I did it graciously, and I explained my reasons why. But that's what I'm here to tell you. People will come to you offering all sorts of assistance, and it is only from the place of love and care. And I truly respect and acknowledge that. But what you need to think about are what are the things that you love to do so much what are those passions, those hobbies that you have that when you're doing them, you lose track of time. You're in your flow state, your, your love and life. I didn't want the food train to come up to my house. I didn't want people to send meals night after night because I realized that if I wasn't able to prepare food, if even by instructing my husband and getting help from him, that I would be really sad. I would find that as a sense of loss, another thing that was taken away from me because of my elbow injury. On the other hand, now, so what I want you to do is think about the things you love so much, your passions, your hobbies, those things that light you up and bring you joy. Maybe those are not the things that people should be offering assistance for you with because it might make you even sadder. Alternatively, I'm not a person that um, spends a lot of time on their physical appearance. I do not wear makeup. 
I'm not into the latest fashion or trend. I can throw my hair up into a bun and be happy. I wear a hat a lot. You know, I'm, I don't care. So when a friend of mine offered to drive up to my home and come wash my hair in my own house and then braid my hair for me after she cleaned it, I easily said yes to that because it's not a ha hobby of mine. It's not a passion of mine. I don't care about taking care of my hair, to be honest with you. It's easy. <laughs> I don't do much with this in the morning. So when people start reaching out to you, asking what they can do to help you, it is beautiful. And you can appreciate that support and acknowledge their wishes to assist you. And think about what you would like to continue to try to do for yourself, because if taken away, would make you feel even worse. And what is it that you do want to welcome the help for? I mean, having a spa day in my own house with someone washing my hair, massaging my scalp, you know, I couldn't do any of that with one hand. And frankly, I didn't even care to. So it was lovely. And I said yes to that. Say yes to things that you would like to receive that support for. And then politely, graciously, kindly, decline other things that you would really, really rather do yourself or with your loved ones in your home. So let's hear about it from those of you who are recovering from surgery, have had surgery before. Does this resonate? You know, can you see the value in keeping some of those how those passionate, I was going to say those passionate hobbies, <laughs> that doesn't sound right, but those hobbies that you're passionate about to yourself. Um, love to hear from you, comments or questions below. If you've enjoyed the video, there's many more where this came from. Check out the channel. And uh, additionally, visit me at Elizabeth Scala, Elizabeth Scala, <laughs> ElizabethScala.com, which is my website for blogs, videos, and more resources. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.